This is a message to Francis Ngannou and the UFC guys. Look, he wants some of this Gypsy King money. You know where to come and find it. He wants some of this Gypsy King power. I'll give it you. Tyson Fury's high-profile social media challenge to UFC star Francis Ngannou has been met with a retort, with the pair's feud now escalating online, prompting Ngannou to confirm that the bout would undoubtedly take place. Yeah, I think that fight will happen. I think Tyson Fury wants that fight to happen too, so it will inevitably happen at some point, said Ngannou and added, I can't say specifically when, but I'm sure it will happen. We're both willing to make that fight happen. The verbal sparring between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou may appear to be two heavyweight champions, tempting fans on social media with an implausible super fight, but the weirdest part is how strong the chances of it actually happening are. The social media clash. Who would like to see me fight this beast boxing rules UFC gloves? Fury said on his Twitter post with a photoshopped image of the two men and going as far as tagging the UFC president Dana White, to which Ngana replied, how about MMA rules with boxing gloves? I can do you that favor a few hours later. Replying, Fury said, you want to come into my world calling me and Deontay Wilder out to a boxing match? What I can guarantee you would be knocked out and also paid your highest purse to be so. So have a think. Listen man, these guys, none of this surprises me. It's like these boxing guys need guys to fight. You know what I mean? And it doesn't surprise me at all. Dana White on this brawl. Ngannou is recognized as the most powerful striker in UFC history, having won 12 of his 16 fights via knockout. Meanwhile, Fury is regarded as one of the best boxers in the world. He can either bamboozle an opponents at will, as he did against Vladimir Klitschko in 2015, or knock out great opponents as he did against Deontay Wilder in 2016. Let's look at Ngannou's career so far. Three years after losing a landslide decision to Miocic in their title fight in 2018, Ngannou earned a rematch by knocking out four opponents in a row in the first round. Last March, Ngannou fought Miocic for the heavyweight title in the main event of UFC 260 and the fight went in an entirely different direction than their previous encounter. In round one, Ngannou took a more measured and patient approach, landing a strong leg kick and connecting with a massive overhand right that Miocic ate. Miocic aimed for a single leg but Ngannou countered with scrambling and huge blows for some hard ground and pound. The challenger followed up with a left high kick, although his attack was never overly aggressive. Ngannou dropped Miocic with a side-in jab less than a minute into round two, but was caught lunging in on the counter. Ngannou, on the other hand, had a counter in store for Miocic as he folded him with a massive left hook that sat him down and ended the fight. The Overeem knockout. In the first round of UFC 218, Ngannou knocked out Alistair Overeem in under two minutes. The punch and followed up hit were dubbed one of the most vicious ever thrown inside the octagon by some fans. Ngannou slipped in an extremely devastating left uppercut after absorbing a sloppy left hook from Overeem, snapping the demolition man's head back forcefully and dropping him like a big sack of potatoes. Before his head hit the canvas, Overeem was already out, but the predator made sure the job was done and added a big hammer fist for good measure. Up Nick Maynard's phone to try to get a matchup with Ngannou! Oh! Goes the Reem! Pure drama. Ngannou, 16-3 MMA, 11-2 UFC, is going to fight interim heavyweight champion Cyril Gain, 10-0 MMA, 7-0 UFC, in the main event of UFC 270 on January 22nd at Honda Center in Anaheim, California. It's a highly anticipated UFC heavyweight championship fight between the very powerful and dangerous Predator and the agile Gain, who has demonstrated great technique throughout his UFC career. Prediction for Ngannou vs Cyril It's an intriguing battle of sheer strength versus technique. While Francis Ngannou has made significant progress in his tactical and technical approach to fighting in recent years, it's impossible to see him matching Gain in a technical fight. Cyril Gain is one of the few heavyweights in the world who can move in the octagon as if he weighs 185 pounds, and this, combined with years of past expertise in high-level striking competition, puts him miles ahead of the majority of heavyweights in the world in this area. Both men are capable of completing the task. We believe Ngannou's patience will be put to the test. He will back up Gain, but will find it tough to keep him motionless long enough for his combinations to land consistently. While Gane will maintain his composure and outpoint Ngannou for the most part, the damage Ngannou will be able to accrue if he remains disciplined will ultimately build up and he will be able to find the shot to end the game. Now that we've seen the Predators' his career, let's see where Tyson Fury stands. Tyson Fury vs Deontay Wilder Trilogy Fury vs Wilder 1 
Wilder and Fury battled to a 12-round split decision tie in front of 17,698 fans at the Staples Center, ensuring Wilder's WBC title. The fight was judged 115-111 for Wilder by Mexican judge Alejandro Roshin, 114-112 for Fury by Canadian judge Robert Tapper and 113-113 for a draw by British judge Phil Edwards. The verdict was met with boos from the audience. Fury spent much of the battle moving his upper and lower body to dodge Wilder's huge bombs and stay out of range thanks to his unusual posture. In round one, there was little action as both boxers utilized the round to get a feel for each other, with Wilder attempting to corner Fury and Fury avoiding most of Wilder's punches. Fury vs Wilder 2 Fury took the center of the ring at the opening of the bout and established his jab. While avoiding Wilder's strokes, he looked for some big shots. Fury knocked down Wilder in the third round with a powerful right hand to the temple. Wilder beat the count and made it through the round, but he appeared dazed as blood began to flow from his left ear. Wilder was knocked down twice more, but both times referee Kenny Bayless judged them as slips before Fury knocked Wilder down again in the fifth round with a rapid combination punctuated by a left hook to the body. The fight was stopped midway through the seventh round after Wilder's camp threw in the towel to rescue him from additional harm after a flurry of hard-hitting blows from Fury. Fury vs Wilder 3 in the opening round, Wilder was the aggressor, jabbing Fury in the body and hitting several crisp right hands to his chest and stomach, earning him a unanimous decision from all three judges. As the champion attempted to establish himself in the fight, Fury began landing blows of his own and drove Wilder backwards in the second. Fury struck Wilder with a right hook to the head, followed by a right uppercut in a clinch at the end of the third round, sending Wilder to the mat. Fury unleashed another huge right hand in round 10, sending Wilder to the mat for the second time in the bout. Wilder was able to get to his feet and saw the round out. In the 11th round, Fury increased his forward pressure by repeatedly injuring Wilder at range and in the clinch. Fury landed a straight right hand to Wilder's temple nearly a minute into the round, leading the challenger to slump to the floor. The bout was quickly stopped by referee Russell Mora, giving the defending champion Fury a knockout victory. When will we get to see these fighters go head-to-head? -to -head? The 2017 Floyd Mayweather vs Conor McGregor glamour bout tore down barriers in showing that a crossover fight can genuinely take place and, more importantly, be an eye-watering financial success. The $4.3 million buy rate makes Mayweather McGregor the second most successful US pay-per-view fight card ever, trailing only Mayweather Pacquiao $4.6 million. That means a semi-retired 40-year-old boxer trading blows with a boxing rookie making his debut outsold any event headlined by Mike Tyson, Canelo Alvarez, Oscar De La Hoya or any other PPV draw you can think of. This is the power of bringing three large audiences to one event, boxing fanatics, MMA fans, and a large number of inquisitive casuals. Two fighters in the heavyweight prime of their respective leagues will remember what a huge payday the event provided. When it comes to fame and draw power, neither Fury nor Ngannou come close to Mayweather or McGregor. Ngannou, on the other hand, is an exciting, hard-hitting Adonis, while Fury's personality and all-action trilogy with Deontay Wilder have raised his profile in the United States. Fury needs challenges to keep him interested, and his lack of enthusiasm for taking on Dillian White is likely due to the fact that he isn't interested or motivated by the fight. Whatever the terms were, a crossover battle with Ngannou would be exactly the kind of one-of-a-kind spectacle Fury would enjoy. Yeah, I think the fight will happen. I think Tyson Fury wants that fight to happen too, so it will inevitably happen at some point, Ngannou explained to DAZN, a streaming service. I can't say specifically when, but I'm sure it'll happen. We're both willing to make the fight happen, added Ngannou. We don't know how this fight will be promoted, but we're too excited to even think about it. Are you guys excited for the Gypsy King to take on the Predator? Let us know in the comments about your predictions for the super fight. Will Uncle Dana make it happen? And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel Fist First. Thanks for watching.